Welcome to Success After Lockdown, another podcast show here at the Exodus Studio in East Harlem. Um, myself and my co-host Eric Benson, the EB, the creator of uh, Success After Lockdown. Today we have two amazing young brothers who are doing some amazing things in their life and how they transition from the prison system into society. Um, you know, we're, we're definitely happy to have you guys to share your story, what it is that you're doing, and how you transition from the inside to outside. And at what point of your your life did you say, you know what, I'm done with this. I I I'm going to reach my true potential and find my true voice and do what I do. Okay, well, um, my name is John Dukes, and um, and thank you for the introduction, <laughs> and thank you as well. I'm from South Jamaica, Queens, and okay. I've been okay. locked up for 19 and a half years. Um, I was locked up in 1999 and was released in 2018. I had a 20 to life sentence, and um, I made my first board, and um, nice. I got the time allowance, that, that, that credit, where I was able to go six months before my time. And I was released, you know. Wow. So I thank God for that. So that means you were doing something positive while you were in there. You were the wild and now you decided Definitely. to get it. Definitely. Right. I, I did. I don't want to cut your wisdom off. What are you going to say? Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. I, I was just talking about you did that. Yes. Because it is very rarely that a person gets sentenced for that long of a sentence, right? Yes. And usually, from, from experience, you get hit before you even go to the border. Your paperwork goes up there, the folder, they look at it, they go all oh, X, Y, Z, whoa, whoa, whoa. Yeah, come on in, Mr. Duke. Yeah, okay, what are you gonna do? Okay, we'll, we'll, we'll call you back. Next thing you know, you got that pre-o, uh, CO, big old envelope. Hey, yes. come back in 24 months. Uh, yeah, so, you're not ready for so society. You, so you right. actually you made the LCTA, so you was doing something right. I made you know it, you know, so. um, Yes, I, but I, I, would, I'm, I, I, I wanna say this. For me, first of all, it's humbling to be here and to hear all those wonderful things you said about me. Um, and even my brother Mike here, I was with, yeah, like you said, both of y'all, and um, and we all had our mutual together, like collectively time, but then we had our separate time with one another, you know. Right. Um, so I know Mike on some personal sides, just like I know you on some personal sides. What I want to say though today is that my change was basically faith, mm -hmm. you know. Um, I, I I changed, I caught it quick, like you know. Um, I had a mom that was. Still, that's like praying, 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 you know, yeah, grandmother praying, sorry. everybody praying for me, yeah. you know? And um, although some of them, they passed along while I was incarcerated, I got it quick. Like I realized, I heard what you had said on one of the episodes, like uh, Anthony has mentioned like how, yo, he, he had to get it at one point. He was like, yo, I had to get it. Sometimes he said, it took me a little while, but I had to get it. I remember hearing you say that. And for me, it was like right away because I knew that I didn't belong here. That's what you had said. Mm. You said, yo, we, we wake up sometimes saying like, yo, I don't belong here, I don't belong here. Why am I in here? Why am I in prison? I, my life, just, I deserve better. And um, that's where I was at. So my transformation, I morphed into something real fast. It was, it was like a burgeoning effect. Like it came so rapid that I, I couldn't even believe it at the time when it was happening. Because at first I came in a little cocky and even though people didn't know it, I had a, a hidden cockiness. Like I was like, oh, I'm gonna get out on bail. I, Cause I thought I never had a bail. I was right. like, yo, I'm gonna get out on bail. When I get this bail, I'm about a whole 10 sneakers. Like I was rolling like yeah, that yeah, then, yeah, not, now. Cool. No, not no, now, not no. now, let's be clear, <laughs> not now. And I was like, yo. I was gonna say, can I get a pair of Yeah, I was like, I'm gonna do all of these amazing things for these brothers. Like there was brothers in there that couldn't make a $500 bail. I was like, yo, when I get out, I'm gonna do all of that. They don't even know it. Like, they, they got a friend that they don't even know, even though I don't know none of them. Right. Like, that. Yeah, they don't even know it. Like, they don't even know it. Like, they don't even know it. Even though I don't know none of them like that. Yeah. But just on the strength of the struggle. Mm -hmm. But then I never got a bed. And um, real quick, a brother had told me one time, he said, he was by, on that same tier, he told me, he said, listen, he said, I've seen guys like you before. He said, I see you going out on a visit, you're getting your packages. He said, you just came up here and you ain't been here for 24 hours, really. He said, he said but you know what? God got something different for you. He said, money ain't going to get you out of this. Mm -hmm. He said, you are under arrest, not by the state, 
God is taking you to put you to rest for a minute mm. because you've been moving too much. And there's people yes. out there praying for you. Now, I had a mess crazy. Yes. But long after the time went and I got remanded, never got a bail, just kept fighting and then wind up north. 19 and a half years later, I said, wow, I guess I finally got it, what I was supposed to be doing. Mm -hmm. I didn't know it would take me that long to learn, but you know, now I'm here. No question, no question. So I know you have a connection through like the Hudson Link and everything, yes. you know, and first of all, I applaud anybody who while incarcerated, take advantage of the program of education, first and foremost. I don't think people understand the concept of educating yourself. It's that, you know, we always heard that, thing, that, that term, you know, do the time, don't let the time do you. Right. And it took me a long time to understand what, what old times used to mean by that. And I'm like, yeah, my time ain't doing, I'm gonna do my time, you know what I'm saying? I'm gonna wild out, I'm gonna get my canteen, my cameras, I'm gonna do, I'm gonna still do me, because that's who I do. Yes. But to go in there and do the time, educate yourself, uplift yourself, find your true value, try your, mm -hmm. find your true voice, and, and, and not be a part of the, the crew that running to the yard, that's always getting into some stuff, always trying to do negative, always trying to be in everybody else's business, but to get up in the morning and go to school and sit there when you don't really want to, maybe you have one laying in your cell that day for the day, but you get up and you push through it. When everybody's still watching TV and what's going on, you in your cell, you studying and you reading. Like, yo, applause. Like, 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 like applause. Like, that's real. Because that's what separates the boys from the men. Determination, education is what's gonna set you free. Gives you that hope and that light. You can come home and do something positive like that. You know what I mean? Like that's amazing. I just always find that yes, that's great, you know. Can I, I wanna um, expand a little bit on what you're saying, Anthony, because I think listeners don't really understand that the brotherhood that is really uh, shared and created in prison. You know, people that we've watched men, I've watched men personally, and I'm sure they did themselves, that were sick and we've cared for one another. Um, you know, tried to make sure that the officers, the COs rather, would take them to get the proper care that they needed. Sometimes even risking our own freedom for that. You know, um, numerous times I've seen people where, when we do the uh, Attica, recognizing Attica uh, for Attica Day, where people will say, listen, don't go to the mess hall. If you're gonna go to the mess hall, right. yo, don't eat. If you need food, if your locker's not filled, we'll feed you, we'll give you something. Yeah. I've seen that happen numerous of times. You know, um, I, 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 I also saw it transcend from there to out here now. Mm -hmm. And that's why we at this table. So I just wanted to, to share that, like to absolutely. say that, to echo some of your sentiments. No, absolutely. Right. Yeah. So, so uh, Mike, like, you know, for you and I, man, we got like a really special bond, man. Yeah, like, for real. We we uh we talked a lot about preparation, you know, which a lot of people didn't. Preparation you know, and so performance, we, man. You know what I mean? Around <laughs> us. And preparation and performance. <laughs> That's right. And a lot of people around us they didn't, you know. Um so like I just want you to talk about, you know, your transitioning. You know, um, where was it? And, and, and sing, sing, whatever correctional facility, and you know, what has it done for you and where you at? Where has it put you in life today? You know, your transition in life. All right. Um, first off, my name is Mike Blaster. Absolutely. Um, yes, yes, South yes. Bronx resident. Oh, yes, yes. Born yes, yes. <laughs> yes. Um, I uh, was sentenced to 16 and a half years with five years post release supervision. Um, CR 2015 was incarcerated 2001 yeah. <laughs> and um, I've been home now seven years yeah. April 10th this past April 10th made seven years of being home congratulations yes. um, that uh, moment of clarity yeah. I think it became like uh, early on it hit me hit me early on I would think um, like I was serving time in um, upstate correctional facility. Mm -hmm. And um, I had a lot of time to think, thoughts about getting back out in the street, 
and how I'm gonna do this and how I'm gonna do yeah. this better. You know what I mean? Yeah, Those type yeah. of thoughts crossed my mind, but yeah. at the end of the day, I knew the end result was gonna be back to that cell. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. That's where it was gonna lead me back to. That's and right. now my wife and my kids is traveling, you know, 10 hour trips on a bus to come see me, freshening up after they get off the bus inside a restroom to sit on the floor, to sit in a visit room with me for six hours. And I'm like, do I want to subject my family to this again? Uh, I'm like, no way. That was it. Absolutely. That was it. I said, from now on, man, I'm just trying to get out, stay out, and, you know, give back to the community and not take away from the community. Uh, you know? And how are you doing that? Tell me about what you're doing nowadays. Mike. Um, Right now, I'm into um real estate. I'm on a... Um, buying and flipping houses right now. Okay. So, um, right now, a lot of the guys that um, I'm using for the renovations mm-hmm. are nine times out of 10, these are guys that have some type of substance abuse. And they're, um, they're housed in um, sober living homes in Connecticut. Mm-hmm. And these guys have skills of whether it be painting, uh, Sheet rocking, taping, you know. So these guys, I'm trying to utilize them to show them that, you know, listen, get up every day, come to work, you know, earn that money, yeah. and, you know, put your substance abuse to the side and see how good you do, you know. Yeah, so yeah. for some of them, they come and they pull me to the side and they say, you know, thanks for the opportunity because some people just give up on us, you know what I mean? You know, yeah, and I'm like, I was there, not substance abuse, but... You know, the streets was my substance abuse. That's right. That's right. So I know what it is to get a second chance. You just touched, you just touched, you just touched one of my nerves, right? Yeah. So, right. And, and I say that because I'm a recovering addict. I just celebrated nine years. God bless you. Oh, man. God bless you. Look at you, look at you, bro. So I, 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 I celebrated nine years, May 15th, uh, right. you know, uh, last, last week. And I know what it's like, man. Yeah. I know what it was like getting money, I know what it was like doing time, and I know what it was like being an addict, being controlled and locked up. And excuse me if I tear up, right? Cause this is, this nah, is, this is what I do, right? Um, yeah. Like a lot, the stereotype of addicts, ex-felons, mm-hmm. ex-cons, whatever you want to call it, right? People want to just shoot us and, and, and leave us for dead and say that there's no hope, there's no restoration, there's no, 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 you know, there's no positive in them. And the truth of the matter is, man, that given the opportunity, given the chance, that we can be some of the most successful people. When when y'all came home, like, and actually, you know, gained your release, did you see? Where did you see yourself? you know, um, mm. going and you transition and back out here. You know, <laughs> did you see did you see that five years future in front of you or did you just uh, take it step by step? Let, you know, just explain that a little bit if you could. I could, um, I, I wanna, um, I'll touch back on a little bit of what Anthony was saying about um, going to court. I now, I'm in court a lot of times uh, with clients of mine now, and it's on a different role. That's how I have this American Bar Association, like from lawyer friends that I have now um, out in Long Island, I'm working. And that's where I'm living at right now in Long Island um, currently. And um, I wanted to make a whole, you know, change for myself. My wife, uh, shout out to my wife, Yvette. Yeah, um, yeah. So she sees this. I love you. Yeah. Yeah. She's doing big things, too. Yeah. Thank so you yeah. better make sure you shout me out. Yeah. <laughs> so, Bavette, Bavette was like adamant about where we were going to live and she was like yo we're going to move to Suffolk County and I'm like I've never been out there I don't want to go out to Suffolk County but I wound up meeting some really beautiful beautiful men and women out there and a lot of prominent black people a lot of prominent people of color you know or uh, Spanish or uh, black all, all different shades and, and, and white people that were so giving and loving to me, you know, that to, to our family, like, Absolutely. oh, well, you did this much time, or who are you, or the been talking about you, so I just want to share that, like, yeah, I'm in the courts a lot, in Central Islip Court, I go to Riverhead Court sometimes uh, for my clients, and to clarify what I do, I, um, 
I'm a street outreach worker slash count case manager uh, for Long Island Coalition for the Homeless. Mm -hmm. And we take care of Nassau to Suffolk. So Long Island is big from the whole the whole Long Island we take care of. That's all the way out to Montauk Point, to the end of the island. So um, we house homeless people, you know, with spy applications and um, try to get them in from uh, shelters if they want them. A lot of times they don't want to because, like you said, you meet a person where they're at and they can't see that they need more, that they deserve more. Right. They're kind of like unraveled so much that it's hard to get them back focused on that you are a human being and you don't need to be living in the woods. Mm -hmm. You don't deserve your point. Oh, This is success after yeah. lockdown right here. <laughs> this is it right here. That's it, thank you, thank you. And, and, um, and, and it, it's amazing for me because I get, like you said, with your, with your individuals, your clients, not clients, but the people that work with you yeah. from the sober house, likewise for me, they feed me with, with just by being them and me having to understand them, being patient with them, uh, humbling myself and still like literally sitting down with them, getting down to where they at and trying to understand, even though I haven't been on drugs, mm -hmm. I'm still understanding that I've been around and I have people in my household that's been on drugs. That's why I don't use drugs. Right. Because for clarification like that, I didn't grow up prissy prissy. This is why I don't use drugs. I mean, that's say in right. South Jamaica, you already know, I, I could, I, I'm wearing this jacket, but there's another right. level, layers, let's say, on right. all of us, right? right? right. And, and having been in prison. Uh -huh. you know, but, that but, as ever, I must add. Right. 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 Thank you, and um, and, and 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 that has um, that's been like I said, it's been a fulfilling job career, yeah. I should say. Uh, Hudson Link, you touched on. I remember coming from, um, I mean, we was all in classes together. I came home without my um, degree. I had to go to, I got a chance to go to Mercy College, uh, the Manhattan campus, and um, do that. It was amazing Whoa. to finish up and then graduated. I went to Dobbs Ferry to, to do the graduation, <laughs> even though the pandemic was there and we couldn't really like give it the full heightness right. of what I wanted, what I felt. Right. I never felt that much like my cheese, my smile was like <laughs> permanent, like somebody right. couldn't even right. wipe it off my yeah. face. Right. You know, um, so that was amazing to do. Um, I want to also say what I do, what, what also some things that I'm doing now, when you say giving back. Okay, yes, the career I chose, that is a giving back career, but I get paid for that. But also with giving back, I have a grassroots organization called Speak Your Truth. My wife and I created this, and we started out, I want to say, about 10 families. We was feeding people that were directly impacted by mass incarceration, indirectly or directly <coughs> impacted, whether their family members in there or the family members came home, you know? Mm -hmm. And we would bring groceries to them. You know, we had got grant, we got a grant, and then we went from there, and some people would do Vimo and, and donate to us and, and things like that. And we went to like 35 families at the time. Wow. It got a little overwhelming for us because we didn't have a truck to like deliver right. it. I was using our own Jeep. Like, it's not even a Jeep. It's like a small SUV or whatever, but we was using <laughs> yeah, that. Yeah. And, try yeah. 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 And, and trying to like, feed all these families and we went from starting from Queens, part of Queens, to all the way out to Mastic um, in Suffolk County, which is pretty far, it's close to like Riverhead. If those who wow. ever rode the LIE, that's like exit 60 something or close to exit 70. Yeah. And um, yo, it, it's, been, it's, it's been rewarding for us, but um, it's, it's not easy. Mm -hmm. But um, these are things that we are doing and did I see myself, to get back to your question, because I didn't get lost, did I see myself, what did I see myself in those five years, was, I believe yeah. you said? I, was, I wasn't thinking about that, to be honest. I was, I was thinking about Hollywood. What I was, <laughs> what I, that's what got me through the course of my bed, because I was around certain people that, that was in the industry, so I was quietly not showing people or telling people, but I was quietly in, my, in the cell that I was occupying, like, Yo, I'm gonna get out. I'm gonna get with this guy. I see these guys on TV now. I'm gonna go find this guy. And although I don't rap, and I never did or sing, I just know that life is very lucrative. And I've been blessed to be around certain people at that time. But I didn't take it to the advantage because, again, even though I was exposed to it, I was still stuck on stupid in the sense that I had my own money. So I was partying with y'all and I was just chilling and we became friends, but I never took advantage of it where I had, I met people that really could sing and be like, could you put me on? And I could have probably managed them and been, never made yeah. it to prison maybe, but I didn't take advantage, I couldn't see that. Right. 
right. I just felt like that was life. Right. So that's what I was gonna kind of like pursue no when question. I came home. But um, no that, yeah, I am. I, that that didn't happen right now. Yeah, I got the same thing for Mike, <laughs> man. You know, did you, you know, how was that preparation stage for you? Um, I think I don't know. I was preparing while incarcerated. Absolutely. Um. I would have folders and notebooks full of information on things that I wanted to get into, which one was real estate. I had my wife send me, I don't know, numerous books right. and <laughs> information from the internet on real estate and different um, businesses. Um, like I came up selling drugs. Yeah. So to me, that was an entrepreneurial move. You know, illegally, yes, but it was still entrepreneurial. Yeah, right, cool. So if I could, you know, hustle drugs and, you know, basically balance the books of being up, really? I could run a company. Yeah. I could start my own company. Anyway, that's right. And do it the legit way, you know? So that was my mindset while, in, while incarcerated. Now, um, once I came home, um, my wife, you know, she had a savings for me, thank God, and everything like that. So mm -hmm. I didn't have to come home and worry about, you know, where I was going to get this from and that from. Mm -hmm. You know, I was um, a little uh, foundated. Mm -hmm. But, um, of course, as a man, you want to contribute, you That's know? That's right. Absolutely. So I came home. I went on, I think it was two or three job interviews. And right away, people were like, oh, yeah, mm -hmm. I want to hire you, this, that, or the third, da, da, da. And then they find out about the incarceration. Then it's like, uh, we can't hide we'll, 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 we'll call you. <laughs> you know, sorry about that, you know? Yeah. And I'm like, wow, here it is. My life is basically, you know, in these people's hands. And they're just like, I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. So I say, you know what? Let me go back, you know, sit down, look over some things and see what I can come up with. Uh, the first project I came up with was um, people who probably even, you know, uh, purchase uh, music from me from being incarcerated. I started a, a company, LLC, the uh, Audio Empire. That's right. Mm -hmm. um, I had Audio Empire lit, too. <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah, definitely did. Back to the facility. Yeah, definitely bad, did. Though. I appreciate <laughs> that, too. Um, I know, like, being incarcerated, one of the things that helped me get through the time was music. I think it helped a lot of brothers get through this time. Yeah. Music could take you to a time and place, you know, sometime that makes you help you. That was my escape, you know. So, and I've seen how lucrative the business was because I used to order tapes. I'm pretty sure everyone here, that yeah. was a Music by mail. Order tapes, was, cassette right. tapes, which we was only allowed cassette tapes. Yeah. Unless you listen to AM, FM <laughs> radio or whatever. Yeah. So I started the company and I uh, researched and I found out, you know, where to purchase the uh, material that I needed, the cassette tapes, the recorders, and um, I LLC the program, I mean, I LLC the business, and um, I worked with my um, sister that helped me put together the catalog because she's a computer genius. Yeah. So she was able to design me a catalog and... Um, Actually, my deceased brother now, he the one came up with the name Audio Empire. That was his, that was his name he gave me. And I, as soon as he said it, I said, that's it. I'm running with that. You don't have to say, tell, tell me no more. I don't have to talk no more about it. And that's how I got started with that. And um, it was pretty lucrative. It, was, it kept me busy because I had to, uh, there was a lot, you know, dealing with cassette tapes, they're so obsolete yeah. that, you know, um, it's hard to get the materials, you know, hard to get quality materials because, you know, people don't want, you know, poor quality materials. No um, yeah. So um, at one point in time, the Department of Corrections were transformed, were transitioning over to uh, tablets. Mm -hmm. This is, you know, after I was home. Yeah, yeah. And from what I was hearing from the inside was that the tablets, basically, you're going to be able to download music and well, order amazing. everything through the tablet. Yeah. So I say, you know what? I got to start looking for something else to do because this is about to die out. Absolutely. So the savings I had from the Audio Empire, um, from the cassette tapes, I said, you know, let me see what else I can get into. And I said, okay, let me see about this real estate thing. And just so happened, I met a brother that was incarcerated as well. He was a contractor. Okay. And um, 
he did work at my house, a house I had just purchased. He did a lot of work there. And like he worked, you know, efficiently. And I mean, came out like, like just how my wife and I envisioned it. No question. So me and him stayed in contact over a period of time. And I was talking to him about getting into uh, the real estate game and flipping houses. And he was saying, you know, listen, you know, that's, that's a good idea. You know, you should move forward on it. And so one day he called me and was like, yo, listen, you still thinking about doing that? I said, yeah. So he said, listen, man, I got this probate lawyer that I know, and I want to, you know, introduce y'all and, you know, we could do something with him probably. So we met up with him and um, we purchased, me, I purchased the first home from him and he did all of the renovations and like, it just turned out so it turned off yeah it went out it, it turned off so so great that i just kept it going and so now that's what i'm still doing to this day i said we want to give the department of corrections a shout out absolutely taking those tapes and going <laughs> going down low yeah, but, yeah I, I mean listen i i i think our our background and our trial and tribulations that we went through made us the men that we are now to make good smart choices all right and i know for a fact that like the real estate business is not an easy one to get into right yeah i just went to sign you know get an application i filled out an application with kings of kings if y'all heard of them mm -hmm. uh from um, south jamaica as well to, and i'm going to be working with them eventually starting possibly in July as a hospital responder and that will be on that cure the violence you know mm -hmm. um, being yeah, that okay. interrupter and, and things like that and what reason why I chose to like to go work with them was because for one they're doing a phenomenal job out there shout out to Lance and all of them they're doing a phenomenal job the other part is this though that where I'm working at is the population that I serve is predominantly white I have no problem with serving them but there's a part of me that, and I think it should be with all of us that want to serve the communities that we came from. Mm -hmm. Not just communities that look like us or that community, but communities that you really came from. That's like, right. just imagine you going back to the Bronx and you're right. doing, building those houses, you know, building those homes. Because a lot of our great minds, in, from what I studied, like even the Renaissance uh, period, the Harlem Renaissance, a lot of them moved out. They, they got the education, they, got, they became doctors, some people, and then they moved out. Mm -hmm. So all those talents left with them. And right. then it left other people there that did not get a chance to see the doctor drive a nice car. And they only, we only saw the drug dealer drive a nice car. Mm -hmm. You know, and, and, and we aspired to be those people. Right. When absolutely, instead of seeing absolutely. the educators that yeah. were really there, there were some real educators, and they still prominent educators mm -hmm. that, are, that are in our neighborhoods. But a lot of them have moved out. So, like I was telling my friend, um, Raina, who works at King of Kings, she was telling me, she was like, John, you should go come in. I was like, I said, I want to come in so bad because my personality and what I like to do, I love to say, sir, ma'am. I love to give all of those, all of those, oh, 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 what, what you want to put, like handles or titles. Yeah. I love to give those to people. Uh, not, not just give them to them, but people that deserve them. Yeah. But I love to, to say that to people because I used to, we had a store one time. On, my pops had a store on Sufton Boulevard for a long time. And um, when I was coming up, and what I used to do in the store, I used to always be like, "Hello, how you doing? Yes, ma'am, and, and sir." And they would laugh, but I would tell them that, "Look, in if you go into the bank, people are gonna say sir to you or Mister, yes. or they're gonna say ma'am. They're gonna give you that respect. If you go to Macy's, they're gonna say that. Why can't we give that our own hood, even mm -hmm. if it's a bodega store?" It's my people. You've been working all day or whatever you've been doing, hustling all day, getting maybe yelled at or, you know, whatever, discriminated, that's right. biasness that's in there, those microaggressions, which I like to call macroaggressions now. That's the new, the new term that, that me and my wife said now, macroaggressions, they, they, that they're giving out and pushing out in those, in those um, places that we work. And guess what? You come to buy something from your neighborhood store and you still get disrespected no so i used to be like that was unacceptable so that's one of the reasons why i'm grateful of what you're saying about giving back where you're out in florida that's why i'm happy to be yeah. to do that now in south jamaica i can't wait to be there and hands-on and talking to my people our people right. so right. thank y'all for letting me shout that so out. no question Sorry. Sorry.
So this is where I don't like to say, we, you know, we end the podcast, but we're going to pause this podcast because the podcast never ends. <laughs> That's right. We, That's right. We, you know, we got plenty to say. We got plenty to show. And uh, I do look forward to working with you, brother, son. And um, I, again, I'm, I, I appreciate, you know, your presence, man, and helping me, man, with launching Success After Lockdown, man. And I, I do look forward to working with y'all in the future. And uh, I appreciate everything y'all doing for the community. And, you know, with that, my, my brother Ed, give it up. Yeah, thank you again to all our listeners out there, subscribers that are following us, man. We want to say thank you to everyone out there. We appreciate you. If you have any questions, please, you can email us at successafterlockdown at gmail.com. You can also follow us on that. YouTube, Spotify, mm -hmm. Apple Music. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we yeah. on Instagram, Facebook, Anchor. Anchor. We everywhere. So, so get this, at us. this is for the people, by the people. Like, you know what I mean? Don't ever have to let your past dictate your future. For all those that are out there that are struggling, whether you're addicted to drugs, whether you're coming home from incarceration, whether you're incarcerated, like that doesn't define you. Your path doesn't have to define you. There are Absolutely. people that are making changes today, and we are one of them. And so, two brothers, thank you for coming out here. Thanks, Thanks for having us. Yeah. 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 Like, 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 seriously, thank you, my brother. Like, this is, this is.